for your glory. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory, Lord. We will lift up a shout to adore you. Every sound that we make, it is for you. We will dance for your glory, Lord. For salvation, for salvations in this place. You're the name by which we are saved, Jesus, Jesus. Let your name be lifted high as our faithful hearts now cry, Jesus, Jesus. Lift up your head to ancient gates, be lifted up. For your glory, we will dance, we will dance for your glory, we will dance for your glory, Lord. Lift up a shout, come on. We will lift up a shout to adore you. Every sound that we make, it is for you. We will dance for your glory, Lord. For salvation, sing it out. For salvation. You're the name by which we are saved. Jesus. 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 Let your name, let your name be lifted high. As our thankful hearts now cry. Jesus. Jesus. Lift up your hands, you ancient gates. Be lifted up. Shout to shake the sky, lift up the crown, be glorified. The king is coming in. Oh, sing it out. The king is coming in. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands to ancient gates. Lift up all you ancient doors. The king is coming in. The king is coming in. We lift, we lift up the shout to shake the sky. Lift up for the crown, be glorified. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. Come on, give God a shout of praise. He's way. He's way. Oh, He's worthy. He's worthy. The King is coming in. Oh, come on, right where you are this morning, give God a mighty shout that He's worthy of. He's victorious. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands, you ancient gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors. The king is coming in, the king is coming in. We lift up a shout to shake the sky, lift up a cry, be glorified. The king is coming in, oh, the king is coming in.
worthy of it all. We magnify you, God, with the lifting of hands. We extol you with singing this morning. We bless you, Jesus. Worthy Jesus, worthy Jesus. Worthy Jesus, worthy Jesus. Worthy of all of our praise, Jesus. Just take this moment right now here with the worship team this morning. Just give God all your thanks this morning. Yes, you have much to be thankful for. Thank you, God, for my family, the breath I'm breathing right now. Thank you, God, for breathing into our lives, for being our healer, for being our Savior, the victorious, triumphant God. song has been stirring in my spirit this week. Oh, you call me out of darkness and you silence every light and no other voice will define cause I belong to you I belong to you. I want to sing that again. Oh, you called me. Oh, you called me out of darkness. And you silenced every lie. And no other voice will define you. No, because I belong to you. Come on, right where you are, tell them, you know, you know the enemy can take what I have, change who I am, I belong to you, you know the enemy can take what I have, change who I am. your blood by your blood I'm being adopted oh that's so good I have taken on your name and I need to be reminded that I belong to you I belong to you let's sing that again by your blood by your blood I've been adopted. I have taken on your name. I have taken on your name. Yeah, that's so good. And I need to be reminded that I belong to you. I belong to you. Whoa. You know the enemy
And this is how I fight my battles. Oh, yeah. Come on, team, let's say. And I believe. And time will leave you overcome. And I will lift my song of praise for all you've done. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my this is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Hey. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, you gotta believe that today. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. Woo! Come on, team, let's sing it in unison. Ready? You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. We believe it. Hey! You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah! It may look. Come on, say. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm This is how I fight my battle. It may look like it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded hey. by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. This is how. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Say, this is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Say it again. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded. But I'm surrounded by you, Jesus. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh God, we believe it. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how we fight our battles. This is how I fight my battle. Yeah. This, this is, is how, how I fight my battle. This is how. This is how. Yeah. Give him your praise. We give you our praise, Jesus.
lift you our worship, Jesus. Worthy, Jesus. Come on, when you're home, wherever you're watching, we invite you to lift your hands to the King. Worthy. Bring to him a sacrifice and worship that he's worthy of today. Give him all of you. We sing, I belong to you. Prove it right now with your praises. I belong to you, Jesus. Complete surrender.
everybody needs to see this right now. There's no no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. fresh revelation fresh realization of your love your deep love for us nothing can separate us from the love of God nothing you proved it with your own sacrifice because while we were yet sinners Christ died for us great love has been given on your terms. Therefore, it can never be changed. We're so thankful for that today, Jesus. Thank you for your presence here this morning. Yeah. Just taking our time here for a moment as individuals are responding to the presence of Jesus there in their homes, workplaces, wherever they are. Jesus, meet them right where they are. Yes, Jesus. Father, we say thank you for the privilege, for the honor of being able to worship you so boldly, so freely. Because we know that when we worship you, that when we just live and move and have our being, that you see Jesus over us. We thank you so much for your salvation, for your freedom. For that, God, we give you praise with our lives. In Jesus' name. Come on, team, let's applaud the king. We encourage you to applaud, applaud the king with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to say thank you so much for participating in worship with us this morning. It is a privilege to lead you into the presence of the king. The team wants to say hello. We're all here. 
you don't see a couple people in the background, Josh and Lester are helping with our media ministry this morning. So we give them a big applause for them helping us stay connected, sounding good. So just want to encourage you that God is on the throne forever. So be blessed. We love you. Thanks for joining us. God bless you. Good morning, Victory People. Pastor Eddie, it's so good to be with you this morning. As you, more, you are aware, we are doing online service only today because a couple members te did test positive this past week that were in service this past Sunday. So we decided to do the safe thing and to cancel uh, in-person service this week and uh, stay connected because next week we're going to play it by ear day by day to determine whether we'll have online service next week or in person. Uh, so hang in there. Listen, we're used to this. We've said all along that there may be times where we'll jump away from uh, in-person service to online uh, only to keep everybody safe. As I said last Sunday in our live service, victory is a safe place for everybody to grow. And we're going to make it that we're going to make it a safe place by doing the right things. Our leadership has made the decision that in times like this, we're going to do the right thing. And um, man, I'm telling you, I'm getting overwhelming appreciation from the church as we are monitoring things on a weekly basis. So hang in there. We're going to get through this together. Uh, this morning, um, I'm jumping out of our series uh, Made for Eternity because I want to talk to you some, about something I, I think it's relative to where we are right now. Uh, a lot of people are discouraged today. A lot of people are just feeling exasperated and exhausted because of all that's been um, going on in our nation for the past several months. Um, and I too, I, I get that. Sometimes we can just get the, at the, kind of feel like we're getting at the end of our rope with some of these things. That's that's confronting us as a nation, as a world. Um, but, but I want to go back to probably one of my favorite books of the Bible, and that's the book of Nehemiah. Um, Nehemiah is filled with great leadership principles, and it's filled with principles that we all can live by, whether you consider yourself a leader or not. Um, there are principles we can apply to our life every day and um, we can get we can get a lot further in our life than we can, I believe, without some of these principles. Um, in chapter one, we find where Nehemiah uh, heard the word that um, the gates of the city had been burnt with fire and the walls were absolutely destroyed. In other words, there was no protection for the people that, that were living in Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, those that were there were just really the remnant of those who had not been uh, taken away from the, the city. They, they're just the few that stayed. And after Ezra came, I believe it's some 70 years before, um, Ezra bring, brought back the law and brought, brought, brought back order. But still, the walls had not been rebuilt. The gates had not been replaced years later. Um, I'm, I'm certain, I can just imagine, and think with me for a moment, that years later, after, after Ezra had been there, things were really not any better. As a matter of fact, maybe things were a little worse. Maybe their attitude was a little worse. Um, but that's the way sometimes we feel, like, when will this ever end? When will it be over with? So as the, the book of Nehemiah opens, we find Nehemiah has this tremendous desire after he heard the word to go back to, to rebuild the walls, to reset the gates. So he went to his king. He was a cupbearer. He went to Artaxerxes and the king asked him why his countenance was so down. And his response was that he had heard that his city, his beloved city of Jerusalem, that the walls were destroyed, the gates were in, in disarray. And he wanted to go back to rebuild the city. And you know what the king did? The king said, what can I do to help? And obviously, Nehemiah had just come out of fasting for three days, and he, had, he was ready. He was set. You know, when, when you really want to hear from God, fast for three days. Just push, push back the plate for a, a few days and, and spend the time you need to with God. Cry out to God, and he's going to give you an answer. And what he did with the answer that we would get is then he can move forward and begin to declare, this is what God told me. And that's what he did with the king. He spoke what his vision was to King Artaxerxes, and he said, whatever you need, I'll help you. And then, then Nehemiah outlined the things that he needed, and the king gave him those things. 
And so now we're now we're on on the move. So now Nehemiah in in chapter uh, two, he's putting things together, and when he gets to chapter three. He, he, he arrives in the city. He doesn't tell the priests and those who are there, the inhabitants. Um, the remnant that was there. He didn't tell him he was coming, but they found out. So they kind of come together and say, hey, Nehemiah, what are you doing? And he said, well, here's my vision. And they said, we are behind you. We're going to help you in this great work that you have come to do. So now we have this sense of coming together and and the vision being told because, again, Nehemiah coming, coming out of fasting and praying, he's got the vision, he's repeating the vision, he tells the vision to the king, the king gives him provisions, and he comes to the remnant that were in Jerusalem, he tells them of the vision that he has to rebuild the walls. Now, they're saying, hey, we're in, we're in together. Now, what did they do? This is my first point. What did they do? The first thing they did, there was 10 gates all together around the city, strategically located. Just a couple by, by, by name was the fish gate. The fish gate was, was where the fishermen came in from the Sea of Galilee with their catch. The sheep gate was the, where, where the, the, uh, the shepherds would bring their sheep in and out of the sheep gate. Well, right now there is no gate. It's destroyed. So not only do they come in, well, the enemies can come in. Those who are against uh, Israel, the, the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, or whoever is out there that wants to destroy or keep Jerusalem in a, in a perpetual destruction, there's no gates. And so the first thing they do was build the gates. Now, let me just tell you, why didn't I ask you, I should say, why didn't they just build the walls? Because what, what good would it do to have walls, but you don't have gates? still don't have the, the adequate protection. So I think what God's painting here in this third chapter of Nehemiah is what we need to do in our life. We need to close the gates, close the doors, close the openings. Whatever the enemy can do to come in and steal from us. John 10, 10 says, the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. It's really, it's the same narrative of, it, of, of what, what happened here. That when, when we don't have this sense of protection and, and just... And let me just kind of be real um, spiritual where, where I'm trying to land this point is, is that the, the gates in Nehemiah's day in the city of Jerusalem represented protection from the enemy. Can I just tell you that the gates are the closed doors of anger or bitterness or unforgiveness or malice or strife or jealousy or whatever it is. If we are maintaining these things in our spirit, we have open doors. And the enemy can come in anytime he chooses. And when God wants to bless us, the enemy just comes in and steals the blessing. Every time, because there's open doors. There's open places in our life where we have not been diligent to close the door of the enemy, to say, no, not in my house. You're not stealing anything else from my family. You know, make this applicable wherever you are. Just think back in the last 30 days, the things that you have noticed that keep coming up in your life, the enemy coming in with the same kind of garbage. Some of the things that he's trying to do, he's bringing bring destruction and discouragement your way. Think about it. Now, what do we need to do? We need to repent of our part in it, close the door, make declarations that we're not going back there. We're not going to let the enemy bring destruction. We're going to stand our ground and we're going to believe that God is in this thing to, to complete the work that he started in us when he gave us the vision, just like he did Nehemiah. So that's the first thing. And the next thing that, 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 that I noticed some 17 plus times, and I say that because in reading in chapter three, I, I, I came up with the, these, these words. L listen, it begins, it begins in chapter three, verses two. And the people from the town of Jericho worked to, together. They worked next to one another. Um, they worked next to each other. And then it says they worked beside each other. And they were next were these people, and next to them were these people, and it just keeps going. And next was Uzal, and the next was Hananiah, and next to him was this group, and next to them was, and the next section was this group. And what this is painting is this sense of unity that we're all working together, we're all one. And, and, and I, I want you to get this because it's so important that in a world where we feel like there's so much division and so much strife, even in the church, 
I hate to even say it, but mask or no mask or shaking hands or no shaking hands. Listen, I, I don't even want to get into all that. But the enemy just wants us to stand apart from each other. And and, and, and I don't mean social distancing, but uh, that's, that's a whole other story. But I mean it's, it, from, from working together. So let's stand together in what we're facing. Just as the children of Israel stood together, they stood strong and they did not allow the enemy to come against them. So I'm encouraging you today, stand strong. Next to this family was this family. They rebuilt the gates here and next to that family was this family and they were diligent. And and let me just give you another point that that I think caps this off. This this guy named Hananiah, the Bible says he was a perfumer. He mixed the perfumes together and make certain scents. And, and here's what he was doing. He was standing there with a trowel or a hammer or a, or, um, a, a, a sword or whatever it was that, that he had in his hand to either protect them or uh, uh, just what he was doing to build the walls. He was there. And I, I don't imagine he wanted to do that, but he had to. It was the right thing to do because he wanted to stand shoulder to shoulder with those who were rebuilding the walls, though they were putting the gates together. Here's my, here's my last thought. Chapter four, this changes everything. Uh, if you've read much about Nehemiah, chapter four just kind of change, changes the d- dynamics of what was happening. There's some enemy combatants named Sanballat and Tobiah. Let's read what they did. Chapter 4 opens up like this. Sanballat was very angry. When he heard that they were rebuilding the walls, he flew into a rage and he mocked the Jews. He said, he, he said in front of them, his friends and all the, the uh, um, Sumerian army officials, he said, what does this bunch of fools, these rebel Jews, they, what do they think these feeble Jews, what do they think they're going to do? Do they think they're going to rebuild the walls in a single day just by offering some sacrifices? Do they actually think they can make something of stones from a a, a heap of rubbish and charred ones out of out of all, of all the charred rubble? They can make something out of it. You know, isn't it just like the enemy? When you start out doing something good, they close the gates, building the walls, doing the right thing, working together. Here comes the enemy. Let's bring all kinds of destruction, all kinds of doubt. He's ridiculing, ridiculing the church, ridiculing the people of God. Well, I'm here to tell you that just as Sanballat and Tobiah would try to ridicule the church or the people of Israel as they rebuilt the walls, the, the, the spirit of the enemy is trying to ridicule the church today. And my message today, as I close this, we're going to stand against the spirit of Te- Satan, Ballot, and Tobiah and continue to do the work of God together. We're going to lock our shields together, lock our arms together. We're going to rebuild the church. We're going to build the church the way God made it. And, and that's, that's the decree that we're making today. We're going to build it by preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the saving grace of God that sent his son Jesus to die on a cross so that you and I could have eternal life together, that we would not be eternally separated from God. We would have God's provisions in this world, in this life. And it doesn't matter what the Sanballats and Tobias would say to us. We have God's promise that he will not leave us. He will not forsake us. It doesn't matter what they say. Doesn't matter what the world, doesn't matter what the system says, doesn't matter what society says, doesn't matter what the government says, if they come against the church completely, it doesn't matter. We're standing strong, building the church, doing what God said for us to do. We're going to continue to do what the Bible says. We're not going to do what anyone says, but what the Bible says. We're gonna stand on the principles of the word of God. I don't care what San Ballot and Tobias say. I don't care what they do and mock the church. I don't care. They, they can say, you, you know, you're building a feeb, feeble uh, 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 wall. You, you're not going to, you're not going to stand against us. Even a fox come up and walk on the wall and it fall down. All that stuff is a bunch of hype. The devil is not, he doesn't have the power the church has. Stand strong, stand together. Close the doors of the enemy. Don't let the enemy have his way in your life. Stand strong and God will see you through. Let me pray for you. 
Father, I thank you today for your grace. I thank you for your love. I thank you for the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus came and he's, he died on, a, on an old cross, an old rugged cross, so that you, so that we can have eternal life with you. And Lord, I pray today that this message will impact the lives of everyone that hears it. Lord, that number one, we're gonna close the gates, all the openings, all the places of our life, all the things in our life that have been open and the enemy comes in to rob. Lord, help us each one to, to do what we know to do by repenting and forgiving and close the gates. And secondly, Father, I pray this morning, not only will we close the gates, but Father, we will strand, stand strong together, just like the Israelites stood arm in arm, family, family down the road, begin to rebuild the walls, rebuild the gates, and we'll stand strong together, God. And then lastly, we will not let the, the, um, the, the sand ballots of our day, the Tobias of our day, bring discouragement by, by ridiculing the work we're doing. Lord, we refuse to come down and to give any uh, credence to what the enemy is saying. We stand against the lies of the enemy today. So I pray your healing upon your people today as we stand strong together in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Love being your pastors. Beth and I dearly love you. And we're looking forward to being back in service together very soon. God bless.